All right, welcome to today's lesson on stepwise refinement, which is basically a method for program design. More specifically, stepwise refinement is a program designing method where you take a large, complicated program and you decompose it or break it down into simpler subproblems that can be much more easily programmed. To do this, you start by creating your main method as you normally would. And within that main method, you start to identify and write any required services that you might need to make that main method work. And when you get to those sort of complex sections, like, I don't really know how I'm going to approach this, you just kind of gloss over it, sort of say, with a, with a sentence saying, write my method here, or write a method that does this here. And once you get to those complex se sections, you then sort of say, well, I'm going to make a method to do that. So you identify that service or method, and you write uh, code to do that service. And again, any complicated sections in that helper service, you can then break down, and so on, and so on, and so on, until you end up with these very short, small, concise, helper services that can be put together to build your main program. When you use this particular method, it's very advantageous because your final program is easy to understand because it's all broken up into very specific sections with very specific uh, requirements and purposes for each of those sections. It's easy to debug because again when you get an error, it's very specific as to where that error occurs. It's in a particular method which has this very particular role. And then finally, it's very easy to modify because you can go in and modify any of those helper methods that you require to fix or to update your particular program. So if you're a little, still a little bit confused, I'll take you through an example of uh, a program I might have that might be solved easier using stepwise refinement. So the program we're going to create is that we're going to make a harvest bot. And this particular robot is able to harvest a field of things that looks like this. So it's a grid uh, with five things in row, a row, and there are six rows of things. That's my field of things that need to be harvested or picked up. The other key condition here is that the robot harvester uh, thing is always going to stop at the top left, start at the top left-hand corner, and it must pick up all the things in the grid. So with that being our particular issue, we need to start thinking about how we're going to solve this. So first, we obviously create our main method. And to do that, we have to ask ourselves a couple of questions. First. What does the harvester need to do to pick up a whole field of things? You can answer that question by saying, well, I want to harvest an entire row of things. Well, then you've got to ask yourself now, how am I going to harvest an entire row? Well, I'm going to move from west to east, picking up things as I go until I get to the end of the row. How would you do an entire field then? Well, you would harvest a row, turn around, move back to the beginning of the row, move south, and do that six times to get the whole row. And if you did that, you'd end up with a program that does something like this. So I'm going to go through, harvest each thing in the row, turn around, move back to the beginning of the row, and get ready for the next one. And then I would repeat until I did that six times, finishing my harvesting. Right? It would give you a program that looks something like this. Right? Here's my harvester. I've got this harvest field method. That's my main method that I'm going to create. And he harvests the row, turn around, go back to the start, move south, and so on. Okay, And it becomes a big, bulky method. Now, if we were to look at this, we start to evaluate how well is this going to work. Well, some of the advantages we have of this particular way of doing it is that it does do everything we require and fully harvest that field. However, as you may have noticed, we have a disadvantage that the harvester is going to make some empty trips back to the beginning of the row. So we need to improve this particular strategy and come up with a little bit of a better option. So maybe, instead of going back at the end of the row, uh, what we can do is we can move south and harvest all the things on our way back. So you modify your plan and you create a harvest two rows method. right? And we repeat this three times. We harvest two rows, move south, harvest the next two rows, move south, harvest the next two rows. So this particular plan also is just as equally as efficient as the other one in that the, all your requirements have been met. However, we're able to do this in less trips and less time, which makes it overall more advantage than the previous solution. However, there are still some disadvantages because it only works when there's an even number of rows, but we're going to ignore this for now just for the sake of argument and assume that all the fields are always going to look exactly the same. So how would I do this? Well, I'd make my harvest field method, and in it I would put all the methods that I would require. 
So I'm going to harvest two rows, get ready for the next one, harvest two rows, get ready for the next one, harvest two rows, get ready for the next one. You notice these are methods that don't exist yet. We call this a stub. It's essentially just going to be something that we're going to have to create a method for with no code in it yet. When you do that, it's going to indicate a section of code that requires more refinement or more working on to figure out how it's going to work. And when we have one, we should have an empty header so the program can still be compiled and tested, even though the code isn't in there to actually do its job. But I could still test it and run any other part of the code that I've actually figured out to that point. And then as I go through, I start to create code for empty stubs as I go. So it looks something like this. So I need to harvest two rows. So how am I going to harvest two rows? Well, I'm going to harvest one row, position myself for the return trip, harvest one row. And then I'd break those down with stubs for harvest row, position for return trip. And I'd write a code for harvesting one row. You'll notice one thing that I'm doing uh, here is that I'm making this particular method protected. This is because this is a helper method. This particular method, I would never really want to necessarily call this on its own. I want someone else who's using my harvest bot to just harvest a field. I don't want them to just go and harvest a return a row or position themselves for a return trip because if they just run that on its own, it could mess up overall how I want my harvest bot to work. So I make it protected so that only the harvest bot can run this in a, in a way that will help it harvest a whole field. And by making it protected, it means that anything that inherits from the harvest bot can also do these particular methods as well in case I'm going to maybe make one that harvests an odd number of rows or something like that. We're going to keep on um, breaking down those methods until we have something that has a fully completed program and you'll also notice that I'm trying to use similar terminology throughout the class so that anybody who's looking at it can sort of work with that term and understand the feel and the flow of that particular program. Okay, so if we're going to take a look at a, a program that is finished, so we'll do this one here, a finished version of this harvester bot, again you'll see the harvest field method here. It is public because this is the method that I want everyone to be able to use. He's going to be allowed to harvest two rows and position himself for the next harvest and we're going to repeat that for the all three rows. I then go down to the harvest two rows method that I've created and you can see it's going to harvest a row, position himself, harvest a row. And we keep on breaking those down you see harvest row, harvest a bunch of intersections. How do you harvest an intersection? Well, you pick up a thing and move. Okay? And you can see all the different methods that are there. The other thing I've done here is I've put a main method at the bottom of this particular class, which is going to be run only for testing purposes. This way I don't have to create a whole other class just to test my program. I can do it right here by compiling and run it, and it's just going to try and harvest its own field. So if I run this particular program, you can see it's going to be a little bit more efficient by harvesting things on its way back so now I have no empty trips being made and when I get to the end I'll be finished. Okay, That's it, that's all we have for today and I'll see you in class tomorrow where we can practice designing some programs using stepwise refinement.